Hello and welcome to your virtual orientation. Congratulations on your acceptance as a research participant in a federally funded workforce development program. Many individuals apply every year, but only a few are chosen. Your focus, dedication, and aptitude for continued success have earned you a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. How will you make the most of your experience? Well, the first step is being prepared. You don't want to show up on your first day without knowing where to go, like Sally here. And you don't want to be stuck waiting for access to the facility because you didn't fill out the required paperwork. In this presentation, we'll lay out some important items to help make sure that your first day and your entire appointment are successful. Make sure you watch it from start to finish at least once, and feel free to use the pause button if you need more time to read a slide. Remember this module serves as a supplement to your paperwork and any other orientation module or welcome packet you may receive. You should still review the appointment letter, terms of appointment, and all other required documents carefully before signing your name. Also, be sure to check these documents for transcript and resume requirements. If you haven't already done so, return your completed forms as soon as possible or you risk delaying your appointment and your stipend. We also recommend that you keep copies of your forms for future reference. Among other responsibilities, the staff at ORAU is in charge of administering research appointments just like yours. We do some of this work under a contract with the Department of Energy. This contract is known as the Oak Ridge Institute for Science and Education, or ORISE. Now let's get started. You've just received your offer letter. And you're excited to tell your friends, but what will you say when they ask what you'll be doing? Well, you can tell them that as a participant in the program, you could end up doing a variety of things. No two appointments are the same. Whatever the case, this program will provide you with a paid hands-on experience in your field of interest. It could even help you jumpstart your career. But it is your responsibility to take advantage of the resources at hand. The person you say hello to every morning could easily become a professional contact. Networking and curiosity are key. Many participants even reach out to different departments and discover whole new fields of interest. As a program participant, you are given the unique opportunity to make friends with people from all around the world, so don't forget to talk to your peers. Also, be sure to communicate with your mentor on a regular basis. Remember your mentor is there to advise, guide, and teach you, and might even provide recommendations to future employers. So you should strive for full attendance and participation, and don't be afraid to ask questions. As soon as you accept your appointment, it's a good idea to call your mentor to discuss first day logistics. This is also a good time to briefly address any upfront concerns you may have. As a participant in a federally funded workforce development program, you will be issued a stipend on a regular basis and may even qualify for other allowances like travel or housing. Check your appointment letter for more information. Although you will not fill out a time card, you will need to keep track of the hours you work per pay period. Some programs prorate your stipend depending on the actual number of hours you participate. You should use your stipend to help cover the cost of your housing, transportation, and daily expenses. We may coordinate housing for you or help you in your search. If you have questions, check your appointment letter for specific contact information and give us a call. We may be able to reimburse your initial transportation costs, but not your daily commuting costs to and from your host site. Please remember that although you will be receiving a stipend, you will not be considered an employee of any kind. This means you will not be eligible for annual or sick leave or unemployment. Contact your mentor or program coordinator for guidance if you get sick or need to take leave for any other reason. Keep in mind also that you are required to have medical insurance before you can begin your appointment. Also note that you are responsible for paying your federal and, if applicable, state income taxes. 
We recommend you speak with a tax advisor if you have any questions or concerns. During your appointment, you may have the opportunity to attend conferences or other professional meetings. As soon as you know of your need to travel, be sure to submit a travel authorization request form. At the end of your appointment, you may be asked to present your research or even co-author a research paper with your mentor. If this happens, be sure to include an acknowledgement to the program and submit to us a copy of any published material. Now that we've covered the basics, let's follow Sally on the first day of her appointment. Sally isn't paying attention to the posted speed limits, but you should. You don't want to get caught speeding. As you approach your site, be ready to show a government-issued photo ID, like a driver's license or a passport. You will be issued a government or security ID badge and will need to wear this badge at all times when on government property. Now it may take a couple of days to receive your badge, but once you do, make sure you keep it secure. You'll also need to adhere to other rules and regulations of your host site. As a tip, it's probably a good idea to check your voicemail and emails before your first day and to check for traffic and weather conditions that could delay your arrival. Make sure you know where to go on your first day and when to show up. Sally here forgot to check her email before leaving, so she missed an important message from her mentor regarding an adjusted start time. On top of that, she's beginning to worry about that short, tight skirt she's wearing. It was okay for hanging out with her friends, but here she needs to look more business appropriate. Now that's dressing for success, and it's time to meet her mentor. First, Sally discusses the morning's mishap and agrees to check her email on a more frequent basis. She also takes this opportunity to make sure she's on the same page with her mentor regarding schedules and expectations. Before she forgets, she makes sure her mentor has signed the certification of starting day form. She knows her stipend depends on it. As much as we hope you will have a stress-free appointment, sometimes problems arise, and that's okay. The important thing is how you deal with them. First, approach your mentor. If you're still unsatisfied, try the program manager for your appointment site. Follow this chain of command until you reach the project manager at ORAU. One way to minimize stress is to maximize your awareness of safety. Talk with your mentor or site manager about safety requirements. Keep these in mind at all times, even when you're not at your appointment site. Stick on well-lit paths, walk with a friend, and hold your phone and keys close. These are simple things you can do to protect yourself. Another way to reduce stress is to set realistic expectations for your success. You'll be in a new environment and may feel at times that you're struggling to fit in or learn new things. Don't worry, you're not alone. Remember that nobody starts out knowing it all. But if you are curious, dependable, and open-minded, you'll get ahead. Simple as that. You should also keep an eye out for others. Some of your peers may be hundreds or thousands of miles from home, and maybe you are too. Reach out to someone if you think they're feeling a bit lonely or discouraged. You never know how much a simple interaction can turn someone's day around. We have lots of success stories from participants just like you. From improving carbon emissions on cars to increasing our understanding of devastating livestock diseases, our participants have gained hands-on experience doing it all. You can find their stories on our website. Okay, let's check back in with Sally. After some time in the program, she's transitioned into a real professional. From her first day, she learned to be prepared, dress for success, and communicate regularly with her mentor. We hope you'll do the same.
Remember to read all paperwork carefully and return the required forms to ORU as soon as possible. Contact your mentor as soon as you can to arrange your first day meeting and to ask how you could prepare yourself for the project. Dress appropriately and adhere to facility rules and regulations regarding property and safety. Check on filing taxes, prepare for commuting and daily expenses, and obtain insurance before your start date. Congratulations once again on your hard-earned acceptance into the program and good luck with your appointment.